When I was little, I fell in love with water. Every chance I had, I would jump in. Rivers, lakes, swimming pool, oceans. After watching the film about Jack Mayall's life, The Big Blue, I spent hours training how to hold my breath in the wilds of my own bathtub. And I remember every Sunday, I couldn't wait for Jean-Jacques Cousteau documentaries and what he had found in the, in the underwater world to show us. Maybe because my name means dolphin, maybe because I learned how to swim before walking, or maybe it's something that we can all feel, this happiness, love and connection to the earth while being in the water. Water is our element. We are made of water. We develop in water in our mother's belly. When I was 12 years old, I did my first scuba dive near Madagascar. My instructor was really French, very French. He was touching, teasing, picking, turning over everything he could, leaving behind him a massive cloud of sand as his fin steered up the bottom. After the dive, I asked him if this was okay, if it did not disturb the fish. His answer, c'est la vie. This was Cousteau's time before we understood that the seas of the world are not endless resource and rubbish dump. For me, life went on, but my passion for water never stopped. I became a biology engineer, but instead of working in a lab, I went traveling around the world, and I was drawn to Indonesia, where I became a diving instructor. What a great life, living on a small tropical island Gili Trangan, north coast of Lombok, the right point there, teaching tourists how to scuba dive and sharing my passion for the environment and the underwater world. But after a few months, I felt that I needed to do more, to give something back to the environment. The more I learned about marine biology, fish life and interaction, and about these amazing coral reefs, the more I wanted to use that knowledge, my time, my energy and my money to do something for the Indonesian reefs. Indonesia has got 85,000 kilometers of coastline, the longest coastline of any country in the world. 17,508 islands which separate two oceans, so many shallow seas for coral reefs to grow and so many fish to live. Amazingly, only a few Indonesian people know how to swim or are aware of the richness of the coral reefs. More than half of the Indonesian population depend on a healthy reef for food and income. Indonesia has got the best coral reefs in the world, but only 6% remain in their pristine state. More than 70% of the oxygen we breathe is produced by the coral reef. Did you know that? No. They are the rainforest of the sea. I like to call them the blue heart of our planet. If you fly over Indonesia, you can see how many rainforests have been replaced by palm oil plantation, but you can't see how much damage has been done underwater. And if you walk an hour in Sumatra jungle, you might be lucky to see about 50 different species of animal, but the same hour snorkeling in one of Raja Ampat's coral reef, and you will be able to see hundreds of different species, species of corals, species of fish, crustacean, and so many other creatures. The coral reefs cover only 0.1% of the surface of the earth, but they are so important for our blue planet. 25% of all fish live on the reef and all the other fish, they need the reef for different activities such as mating, laying eggs, hunting, feeding, resting, sleeping, or getting cleaned. Yes, they live in water, but they do need a shower sometime. That giant manta ray is having a spa in Komodo by dozens of butterfly fish cleaning its skin. And that weird mola mola of some fish 
is having a stiff brush by a banner fish. It is all connected and interdependent. When I first got to Gili Trangan in 2004, you could still hear dynamite fishing happening underwater. After a bomb, there is nothing left. No fish, no coral, just a pile of rubble. And on land, it was not much better. Rubbish everywhere, no organization. Often, I would see rubbish flying out of the fence, being disposed in my garden. So, I couldn't sit on mon cul, oops, sorry, <laughs> that's French for bottom. I couldn't sit back and watch this happen. So I joined a local NGO called the Gili Eco Trust, and my mission became to restore the reef and raise awareness. I slowly became the eco warrior of that little island. Therefore, I met more and more people giving me advice and support, and I learned more and more about everything related to this coral reef. Sharing that knowledge with everyone who wants to listen, like you. The Gili Islands are famous. More and more buildings, more and more visitors, everyone thinking about development and how to make money. I convinced them to use some of that money to restore the reefs for a sustainable future. The equation is simple. Healthy reef equals many fish, equals many happy customers, equals many happy local people who can feed their family and get job and income from tourism. Today, in Gili Trangan, every diver pays a reef tax to the Gili Eco Trust. We raise around $50,000 a year to put towards the reef. I am responsible for distributing the money, so we can pay the fishermen not to fish. We can patrol the marine protected area, we can place mooring buoys, and we can help the government to be efficient and enforcing regulation. And because it's the dive shops and the businesses collecting the money, my phone never stops ringing. Because every time they see something wrong, illegal fishing, polluting businesses, anchoring, they call me. Because they know I will take some action. I will send the patrol boat out or alert the government. The fact that they're calling means they care. We use the Gili Eco Trust money to implement the Biorock Reef Restoration Method. This. It's a kind of artificial reef offering a strong and stable structure for corals to grow faster than in the wild. Faster because we are speeding up the normal reaction of coral growth by giving them a little bit of electricity. Yes, electricity and water can mix well. We have built 82 Biorock reefs and we're building some more. There's nothing compared to how many hotels, villa, restaurants got built on the Gili Islands. But we can say that we have more inhabitants in our artificial reef than all the people on Gili. The fish love our reefs. We also use the fund to do land-based projects to deal with the rubbish issues. So we organize cleanup days and we offer free dives to collect marine debris. But we also distributed free collars of rubbish bins and reusable bags to all the community and all the businesses. And we educated them about rubbish selection, why is organic and why is not. As the first time we asked local people, where does the plastic come from? They answer, from trees. Trees? <laughs> so now they know that it's made from oil and it takes up to 400 years to disappear. As we live on a very small island, it's really easy to see the positive effect. Or you could also be really frustrated by the negatives and the lack of movement. I choose not to be pessimistic, otherwise I'm not an eco-warrior. And there are always benefits, as I often 
giveaway reusable bag bags at the market, I get really di good discount on my groceries. By practicing yoga, I learn how to fight with my heart. Warrior one, warrior two, eco warrior, any other pose in which you anchor your body into the earth and you feel that flow of energy going through your body. When I'm in the water, my whole body is connected to the sea. The plankton sting my skin and I listen to that silent word which is actually so noisy. Cracking, fizzing, popping, the sounds of the reef are amazing. I connect to my heart instead of feeling depressed. I am growing that blue heart in myself. I often say that my job is a pile of frustration and so much stress, but then I see our reefs recovering and how many people come to learn with us. How happy the local kids are when I take them snorkeling and telling them stories about the reef bounds and the fish interaction. I realize that if I get tired and frustrated working with human and rubbish, I can just go in the sea and enjoy the success of our actions. And because the Gili Island certifies 80% of all new divers in Indonesia, it means that up to 10,000 people a year are learning how to dive responsibly with a minimal impact. We are happy to say that we do influence people by teaching them about the importance of our oceans and the coral reefs. My real passion is reef gardening. Moving, helping the reef, and by moving pieces of coal into a place where they can be stable and cement again. So they can feed and grow again instead of rolling down a slope and dying. We are regenerating the reef. Small or big, loose pieces of coral can be saved with your hands. That is what I love doing and sharing as I'm feeling useful for the reefs, not just observing the degradation and for sure not contributing to it by thinking, c'est la vie. So grow your blue heart. And if you're not a water person, grow a green heart. Spend time in nature. Live responsibly. Be aware of the environment around you and don't complain about the state of our planet or our oceans. Enjoy what is left and care for the future. Thank you.